What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Clockwork Empires. We have all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, if we can, oh, we can prove our smithing. We can request excess ores if we wanted to. That'll cost us 20. I don't think it will hurt us with Stalmark. Let's go ahead and, yeah, request the ores. That's cool. Uh, as long as it doesn't hurt our position with them. Like, if we lose, like, five reputation with them, and that's a little bit rough, but if we can get some things pre-stocked for our metallurgy place right now, I think I'd feel a lot better about it. In the previous episodes, we have had our vicar working against the occult influence in our town rather than using the NCO. That's been pretty cool. Oh, wow. They gave us all kinds of stuff. So we've got gold and all kinds of little things happening right now. We also have a ravenous herd, which has apparently occurred. We've got people who are no longer maddened. I'm definitely thinking we're going to need a much, much larger church. Before this goes any further, we may want to consider demolishing this place and resetting up somewhere else. Oh, good. we got the decorative bench up, too. I wanted to see what this would do for me. So let's have a look here. Decorative bench. What do you do? Oh, they can make bric-a-brac from stone. That's much more efficient. Mm, uh, okay, make me some clay pots, though. Clay pots. Let's go with, like, five clay pots that we can just scatter around here to make it, like, actively stand out as a clay works type place. Inside of here, we've got people assigned to nothingness at the moment. Uh, if we can find somebody that's good at smithing, who otherwise is not really doing anything else. Man, it's amazing how frequently I just don't get to assign who I want to a place. Bummer. Okay, well I guess OG's gonna be our smith. Nothing much you can do about that. Welcome to the smithery, OG. And then we're gonna take modules. I wanted to get this up and running as soon as possible. We will put our iron charcoal kiln inside of here, and that's actually just going to be, like, right at the center. And hopefully we can produce our own charcoal out of wood, I'm hoping. Uh, you produce charcoal. Essentially the charcoal building process, they called it coke back in these days, or previously. And so technically if you were smelting using coal, it would be called a coke furnace, if you were using the dialect of the time. But, um, sorry, I like dumb shit like this. <laughs> I spend a lot of time looking stuff up like this for my D&D campaigns and whatnot. And so, essentially, you've got to burn wood in an anoxic environment. What this does is it causes the various oils and random chemicals inside the wood to collect and percolate. And then the wood becomes saturated with it. It's unable to burst into flame because there's no oxygen in there. And so it just sits there and kind of reduces to its own juices, essentially. And you can do this on the small scale if you want. You can make something called char cloth. It's the exact same thing as charcoal. But you can take, like, let's say you take um, a little bit of fabric, like a foot of fabric, and you put it inside of an airtight tin, and then you throw it into a campfire. If you do that, when you bring it back out, if the tin is actually airtight, the cloth will be turned to black. And if you try to light it on fire, it will instantly burst into flame, and it'll hold a flame very, very well. It'll practically explode, to be honest. Um, but that's the general rough idea when you make coal as well. In addition, you can just mine coal. Uh, coal, it forms in nature the exact same way, actually, the, in anoxic environments. So essentially what will happen is you'll have, like, swampy places. This is why the east coast of the United States has so much coal, is because prehistorically that was all swampland out there. It was just giant flatland swampland. And what will happen is over time as that water collects and it doesn't get recycled, it's very stagnant water. The plant life and the creatures inside that water will use up the entire oxygen um, allocation, so there will be no oxygen left inside there, it will become anoxic, and then the plant matter that falls to the bottom can no longer rot because the process that allows it to rot requires the presence of oxygen. And so, in lieu of having oxygen, what will then happen is you've got all this plant matter sitting down at the bottom of like a swamp essentially. There will be a landslide, or there will be some kind of event, earthquake, whatever that will cover that up, and that's how you end up with a coal seam, is over time, the compression will turn that into coal. All that rotted material. So yeah, it looks like we can take 15 wood to make 5 coal, if we really, really wanted to. Other modules that we can throw into here. We can make a smelting crucible. And for now, I think we're going to have to stick with a stone smelting crucible. It's subpar, and not something I'm excited about. But if we put one on each side here, Oh, I could have put it right there. Well, here. No, 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 no. Cancel that. That guy right there. Cancel a thing. I uh, don't want that. Well, he'll build it, and then we'll have him just move the module. It'll be fine. It'll be all good. I don't want that right there. Yay, it worked! Huzzah. 
Then I want these to be one on each side because it'll look legit. I did it again, goddammit. I did it again. Yeah, one on each side. See, doesn't that look... It looks grimdark, doesn't it? Because it looks like it's made out of bone or some shit. Looks all gothic. Like neo-gothic. I like it a lot. We should be baking bread now, too. So that'll be food for the lower classes. Yes, yeah, so we've got two loaves of bread right there, and I'm hoping that they prefer it. As far as our research goes, have we made it to alcohol distilling yet? Okay, so alcohol distillation. Designing a still that can handle and tame the somewhat corrosive drinks native to this continent was tricky, but our scientists were up to the job. This high-speed, cog-driven still would allow us to brew all sorts of concentrated drinks much more effectively than a simple brew. We may now construct the still module using a metalworks assembly workbench. When placed in a kitchen, the still enables a whole new set of brewing recipes. Good. So inside of the metalworks, it says we can do the construction there with an assembly workbench. Oh, indeed we can. So with the decor workbench, I'm going to strap that up against the wall. With the assembly workbench, we'll do something similar. Uh, it looks like we can actually put in crater pots over here. But the first thing that I wanted to do was actually add those to this building since it's the one that produced them. And so we can do this whatever way that we want. I would suggest we just kind of sit those right there. Just to show people that, like, yeah, we know how to do the stuff that we say we know how to do. When you walk into our shop, it looks a little bit nicer in here now. And so that should also help even out all or even out all the negatives that we've been having for working in here. Because believe you me, we've definitely got some serious negatives. Man, I just cannot get it out of my system right now. You know what I mean? Like, so the election just happened, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna weigh in on that just yet. I'll have a video log for you later in the week. Although by the time this goes up, you may have already seen it. But I don't know. I kind of feel like the United States is falling apart right now. It's never felt like this before after an election. It's just got me down. It's just got me losing faith in all of my countrymen at the moment. It's just making me feel sad. The amount of hatred and just vitriol. Like when you go outside in the city right now, you can feel the tension. It's weird. There's like an oppressive silence, like a tension in the air with the way people scan each other's faces. Like searching for the other and like the enemy and whatnot. People posture weird now when they see you going down the street. Like there was always a certain aspect of bravado where I live. But, like, right now, people are definitely looking, and the tension's thick in the air. It's, like, ready to snap. You know, it's... It's something else. I've never seen this before. I'm not really sure how we're going to deal with it as a people. kind of feels like we crossed a bridge this week. Something feels different, you know what I mean? Something feels very, very different. Uh, if we can smell some of this gold, we'd actually be in great shape. How much, how much coal are we sitting on top of right now, out of curiosity? Seven, five, and three. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. But, I think we can handle that. So, make me some charcoal. We're gonna go... Give me a 20 stack of charcoal. Four of those. That's gonna use up 60 of our wood. And that's okay, because wood is taking up a massive chunk of our storage right now. Like, we have a ton of wood, as far as I know. Like, it's just sitting around all over the place. Don't we? I thought I said we had something like 400 wood just a minute ago. Now, some of it might be a field. That's a good thing to raise right now, is that a lot of it might just be, like, sitting around doing its thing. I'm going to suggest that we forage everything we can from the leftover scraps of the airships that have fallen previously. We'll leave the game unpaused for that, too. In addition, it might be a wise idea at this point. Well, I don't know. We might be able to plant shrubberies or like little gardens or something like that. That might work out. I mean, I would also suggest that we do something like this with our lamp posts. Just kind of put them up and down the street on the corners of buildings to make it look a little bit nicer here. And chances are we're probably not going to have the supplies in order to do this with the entire street. But it'll make the whole thing look nicer. And I think it's a good idea. This place will have its own lanterns in just a moment, so I wouldn't worry about it for right now. But at the corner of the street, we'll put one right there. Uh, at the corner of this street, we'll put one right here. At the corner of this street, we'll have one built too. There we go. 
That'll look nice, and it'll brighten things up a little bit. Because at nighttime, it's dark around here. And I do think those are actually going to take up a lot of our decorative stuff. So as far as glass panes go, we may want to get on top of that. Uh, we got two overseers who have come to join us in our colony. Not going to be entirely too useful having that many overseers. But, you know, it's something. It's something. We should be bringing back... Yeah, I was going to say, we should be bringing back infrequent sand right now. I'm going to suggest that maybe we go in on the production of just 10 glass panes and we just keep that up until this job is done so that it's just being worked on, you know, so it's getting finished. Uh, I'm also going to suggest that for the amount of stone that we're sitting on right now, rough stone blocks, we got like 33 right there. It looks like we're sitting on quite a bit in the, oh, four in this stockpile. A little bit in this stockpile. Well, maybe not so much, but still. Um, I'm going to suggest that maybe we try to keep that stocked up a little bit better into the future. These guys are probably going to run out here and start working on these lamps, and that's good. I would like to put in some kind of road, be able to like get rid of this grass right here so that you can tell this is like a civilized area. You know, this is like inside the town. Did you guys get that charcoal done yet? He's all by himself. With our... Did we succeed at killing? Oh, we did. We did. Let's go ahead and clear the terrain down here. Get rid of all of that nastiness. That dormant spore. Let's go ahead and claim them, and we'll see what happens. When traders come through, we'll try to sell them to, like, naturalists or anybody else that wants to study them. Kind of strange preserve. We had loads of that stuff when I went to college. Like, it was amazing, the donations we would get from all over the world. Like, you wouldn't think that Sonoma State University would have that kind of draw. But, like, people from all over the world would send us stuff in our geology department and our biology department. just animals that were stuffed that had, like, been in their parents' house for, like, a hundred years or whatever. They would have, like, stuffed lynxes and stuff like that. Or they would have, like, these rock samples or crystal samples that, you know, maybe a hundred years ago they had an ancestor in England who was a naturalist. And it's just been sitting around in their attic somewhere. We get stuff like that all the time that people would just send to us in, like, random crates and whatnot. We had uranium, too. Uh, it turns out every, I guess, as a state thing... Every location that does research has to... Oh my god, the amount of people inside of there. I'm going to strongly suggest that perhaps we think about building a new church now that we've got more lacquered planks. And actually, do we have more lacquered planks? Kill that off. Get started with the lacquered planks, please. Take that on up to like 12 of them and just see what we can accomplish right there. On this side, he should be chewing through planks pretty quickly, trying to keep our plank production locked down because we always need planks. In addition, I would suggest that maybe we chop trees along this side over here. You know, just give them something to work on. Nice little bit of something something to provide us with more logs. And yes, that's going to be a huge job right there. But we've got so many overseers and so many people working on this stuff that I'm not really... Altogether, that worried about it. I'm going to request excess ores, too, once again, from the Von Stallmarks. I would love to have a very, very nice supply of all of this stuff. I mean, when they send this out, it looks like we're getting zinc, we're getting sulfur, we're getting all kinds of good things. Uh, on top of that, we'll start working on sulfur tonic very, very soon as well, so that we have medicinal drinks to go out and kind of ease the suffering of our soldiers. So there's a couple of things on the docket that we need right now. We need to expand our military. We need to... We expand our military, we need to expand our housing, we need to expand a lot of different things right now. We have an incoming trader from the Herzogatum. Oh, Novorussian, never mind, Novorussian. And they've brought paper and also stone. I'll probably go out of my way to be amicable, amicable during this exchange because I do think that it's important that we maintain relations with people. However, for now, we're going to build a big church. A big, big church. So foreign outreach is not going to be particularly useful right now. Frontier exploration, once again, not that useful. Public services, however, we're going to build ourselves a rather large chapel. And it's going to be at the end of this street right here. Um, no, cancel it. So for the chapel... We'll call it that right there. And it's going to take a lot of supplies to get this done, but I do think it'll be worth it in the long term to have this massive church done. Because as you can see over at the center of our town, 
we're having all kinds of problems fitting everybody in that wants to go to confession and everything like that, and it just looks crowded and unpleasant. And just in general, not something that I think people are going to enjoy dealing with. There's no stat assigned to this. There's no, like, penalty for having a crowded church. But I feel like we can do better. I feel like we can do better, and so I'm going to try. And while that's being constructed, we're going to go ahead and demolish this building. Do we have more cogs? Looks like we're going through cogs pretty quickly for the production associated with our... Oh, yeah, we had traders as well. We don't want to let that go to waste. So what did they have for us? They have logs. They have stacks of paper, which I'm going to take right now. And they have the rough stone. You know, I don't have a problem trading any of this stuff. This all sounds great to me. It all sounds very, very good. We can't serve the whiskey right now. The barber pole we could put up at some point. A boxed chemistry workbench I'll probably hold on to for now. We'll get rid of the church banners. We'll get rid of the boxed cot. We'll also get rid of the claywork stuff that we're dealing with right now. And that should definitely help us get up to snuff. That final chair will be traded as well, and that'll be done. That'll allow us... The paper's really, really nice, because I don't like to waste supplies producing paper, and so... Are we actually out of wood? We don't have any more wood. Okay, we'll cancel that job then. Cancel that job right this second. And then hopefully people will get back to chopping down trees very, very shortly. But in order to get that done, I think we're going to need a bit more public housing too for our laborers. So lots and lots of little things to think about at the moment. And really not a whole lot to do about it. Simply due to the fact that we've got loads and loads of people working on stuff already. Like there's lots of jobs to be done. We've just got to wait for those jobs to be finished off. As far as our research is concerned, we're about to finish that off. Which will give us a 20 for fancy cooking. The outdoor work initiative will increase the quality of life for outdoor workers. I think that sounds great too. A structure is under attack. By whom? Who are these individuals? Who are these people on the ground here? A hostile foreigner. Where are they from? I didn't see anything... Interesting. I'm not sure what to say about that one. I didn't see any any brief that let us know we were under attack. My suggestion would be that we take somebody who's not assigned anything at the moment. Uh, let's have Bronswick do it. He'll have to start from scratch. Actually, no. Let's take Zeus Cordwick and we'll bring him back. His Art of War is very, very good. And then what we'll do is we'll take the unassigned worker pool for Zeus Cordwick. We'll assign them right there. That's done. And then in our foreign office, what we'll do is we'll assign somebody new over here because the diplomatic work is much less important than the protection of our commonwealth. So we will put Bronswick over on this side. And now that Bronswick is responsible for the protection of us diplomatically, let's find him on the list. Bronswick, where are you hiding at? We will add one worker over here, and yes, they won't be able to generate that stuff very quickly. But on the plus side, it'll help out. It is what it is. I think it'll be okay. We have to swap things around a little bit, so be it. It's unfortunate that our commander was the only person that was killed so quickly at the outset of that fight. It's very, very unfortunate. It's not something that I'm pleased about. But sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles, and I don't believe in save scumming or rolling anything back. We're going to roll with it in this series, because anyways, we're kind of drawing to a close. We basically built everything as it stands right now. Anyways, why worry about it? I'd like to see what their workbench can produce. They can do hanging pots. They do all kinds of random stuff in there. I would say with the smelting crucible, let's get the gold going. I don't know how much gold we have, but smelting that into bars I think will do pretty well for us. We've got four... Let's just give ourselves five gold bars for right now. Five gold bars should be enough for all the construction we're planning on doing in the future. Oh, it takes three. Okay, so yeah, that'll go through our gold very, very quickly then. After that, we're going to start working on copper. I'm sorry, we'll start working on iron after that. After that, we'll start working on copper and bronze to see if we can move ourselves into the future. We have dead individuals, like, everywhere. I don't know who these guys are. Their outfits appear to be... Oh, I don't know. Something Turkish, maybe? 
the head wraps are something that I've never seen before, so I'm not really sure. The rest of their outfits look to be more or less Napoleonic, but I'm not sure about everything else. Uh, we are going to have to clean all this up in just a moment. It looks like they attacked us with a large crater, too. They threw a grenade or something along those lines, which is not something that I'm super happy about. But oh well. That's the way it goes sometimes. We roll with the punches. We roll with the punches. I don't think we have a whole lot of... We've got a grimoire over there. As far as... So we've got people who are enraged. And they're probably enraged because they don't feel protected, right? Yes, they feel recklessly endangered. So that's going to come down the line. To us building a new barracks, which I think is going to have to be... It's going to have to be done soon. So let's go ahead and put in a new barracks over here. Just a little small one. Nothing too impressive. We have no wooden logs right now because our jobs are a little bit backlogged. Oh, we lost one of our civilians there too. So the jobs are going to take a bit, but hopefully they start working on them shortly. Oh, they're picking through the wreckage of some of the things that happened over here. And they're actually... I didn't know you could get refined objects from the wreckages that are over from the clockwork ships that would come along. Kind of cool. That's good. He's working on smelting gold ore right now. It does appear as though that's going to take some time to get finished off. Not a whole lot to be said there. For the amphora, where else can I put the uh, super cool amphora? Like, are there any other buildings that I can place those inside of aside from here? Because their building quality is up already. I think I sold off the rest of them, but it's something to think about. I think they'll probably make the exterior lamps over here with a decor workbench, a steam radiator, and we've also got candelabra. Okay. I would suggest that maybe we craft bric-a-brac. From, didn't it have stone over here a little bit ago? I'm not saying what allows me to make the outdoor... I'm not seeing what's allowing me to make the outdoor lanterns and whatnot. Uh, we got another ravenous herd coming in too, so the colony just can't seem to get a break right now. It appears as though it's going to be mostly nasty from here on in. Oh cool, stone pellet ammunition from there too. Good. Yep, just keep working on it. Everybody's got stuff to do. Everybody's got things to accomplish. It is what it is. Forage what you can from everything that's laying around over on these sides. And then when this save concludes, I think I'm feeling pretty confident about this episode that we can stop and move on to whatever comes here in the future. If you like the series, I'm really, really glad because this is one I was, I've was i been excited for a long time about dedicating some time to a series here on the channel. This is one of those games that I would treat like the Long Dark or whatever, where I would bring it back in the future too. I would just maintain my save and we could start on a new map or something like that. Uh, night is disturbed by the sudden flare of purple in the sky. A meteor shower is occurring. A proper laborer keeps their eyes on the ground. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and study it with our laboratory. Mildred or Stamper will focus all of her efforts on researching the meteor shower using specialized equipment and the methods of the laboratory. Fantastic. Yeah, it's one of those games that I've been looking forward to doing a series for a long, long time, and it had just never come up like it had never become important. And so, eh, I'm glad that I finally got the opportunity to do so. I'll see you all in future episodes. Thank you for stopping on in. Hi to everybody, and I will see you in the future. Bye.